who the school is named after. Uh, John Rollins was a teacher first. He was a superintendent of schools. He was a veteran, Civil War, Union, uh, captain. Uh, he was mayor of the city. Uh, he was on the school committee. He was on the city council. Uh, I don't know when the guy went home. But he did all the time. He, yeah, <laughs> right. But obviously he uh, is what we value in a person who gave his you know, life to the city of Lawrence. Uh, he's an unusual figure that this school was named after him when he was still alive. And he actually came to the dedication of the school and he was humble and uh, thought it was a great, but he didn't think he deserved it. And I don't think, and as I tell the teachers every day, every year when we start school, you know, we kind of use John F. Kennedy's uh, theme that every person can make a difference and everyone should try. And certainly John Rollins is our example that we use every single day is a person who got involved in everything in his community. And that's what we strive, to, you know, we strive to do every single day with the boys and girls. There are only preschoolers and kindergartners in this school now, but they have dreams, and most of those dreams will come true. With hard work and effort, they will become, like you, right here in front of me, contributing, you know, citizens to our city. And you can't ask anything more than that. Mm -hmm. And we're happy about that. Yeah, so thank you so much for this, because I love stuff was, like this. I was painted about the same time the clock tower was refurbished. Oh, so, so 92? Yeah. 1992. Yeah. Who painted it? Uh, hmm? Who painted it? My sister. Oh, yeah. my beautiful. God. She's to do more wow. stuff. That's, that's she, fantastic. She, you know, she never, she's never been in Lawrence. Oh. All right, and there's a similar picture across the street in Engine 6 that was presented to them on their 100th birthday. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I think so. I haven't seen it in years, so I don't know what kind of shape. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, very and we'll leave the school name prominently in our school for hopefully the next 125. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. This is great. So, uh, she did it from a uh, snapshot. She did the picture from a snapshot. Yeah, I, I did a couple, three or four pictures. And then I did uh, one, of, she did, well, like I said, she did one of the uh, Engine 6. And we also, we did a coloring book for Engine 6. Oh, wow. right? And then I went through and I did snapshots with uh, Bobby Mears, right? Oh. <laughs> and when he was still alive, sitting on the chair out in front of the, the station. And we went through and we did pictures of all, everything in the, in the building. Right, and then I sent them to her and she did a coloring book. Um, oh, wow. This typical Ross, she dropped out of art school to go get a job. <laughs> so, I don't know if everybody knows that, who this gentleman is. Hmm? What? This gentleman, is he the principal? Who is he? He's oh, yeah, he's the principal. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy O'Keefe, he's the principal here, yeah. I thought everybody knew him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I met him, but I, I got a shot memory. <laughs> so, with that, uh, fire department, I mean, at least fire was not here, but we do have the fire chief. So, chief? How's everybody? Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> nice to see you again this month. How's your boat? Well, it's <laughs> uncovered now. 
<laughs> and now I'm waiting for the good weather so I can get it waxed and get it in the water. I'm all excited about the boat. Got a new boat this year, so. I didn't hear who said that, but that was. I did. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Looking forward to it. It's your personal boat, it's not the yeah. city's boat. No, it's not the city's boat. I like to relax my days off on a nice boat and have one really keep a new right. report. So, yeah. about a new one this year. So, we've been, we've been pretty busy and not with a lot of fires, which is good. Uh, we got our SCBA grant, as I've, I've mentioned many times. The SCBAs are starting to come in. They're at the manufacturer next week, starting Tuesday. We begin a, a week long training period with them with all the four groups, because all four groups will work that day, uh, that week. So we'll have a training uh, week with them, and then May 1st, we're going live, all new SCBAs, which I'm really excited about because the technology has come so much uh, further than it used to be. I can now have a computer uh, at the command post, and the guys can be inside. I can see every name of who, who is on inside, breathing air, how much they have. We have, I bought five gas meters uh, for atmospheric testing. It's all Bluetooth as well. If one of the guys has one on his air pack, it'll match to his air pack and it'll read out in the computer out of the command post so we know how dangerous the atmosphere is. Now we know it's already dangerous in a fire, but in a hazmat, you know, hazardous material environment or a carbon monoxide environment, it's a it's another uh, tool that'll help us work greatly. So I'm very happy about that. So we, we'll be live with those May 1st. We start training next week. Uh, the three vacancies we've interviewed, uh, we've selected some names. They're now going for physicals and what's called a PAT, physical agility test. Uh, which make sure that they're physically fit to, to do the job. If they pass that, then they'll start work. Hopefully that'll be uh, this month. I'm looking forward to the or, or beginning of next month so we can get them trained because in June, my three newest that are on the job now go to the academy. Uh, so that'll be good. So that'll be good timing. Step to the academy, they can fill in fire on. Um, our ladder truck is almost complete. I, have, I get reports every Monday with pitches. KME came down here last week to meet with me. Um, because I'm a little perturbed with them uh, that it's taken so long. And I said to them, I said, you know, well, what are you going to do for the citizens of Lawrence? I said, because it's their tax dollar. We paid for this truck up front, and you guys fell on your face for the deal. Um, so, you know, you've got to make it up. So they're going to make it up for us in a lot of work on our other ladder truck. Plus, we have a ladder truck for free right now as a loaner. But ladder five, which is in service now, uh, on the on the north side of the city is going to become our reserve truck. When the new ladder truck comes, that truck will go out and have a whole big overhaul done. Uh, new hydraulic lines, new seats. The seats are all worn out. They're gonna they're gonna help us uh, fix it up and get it back so that it's gonna last a few more years at least as a reserve, and that'll be covered. Which is is a big cost that we won't have to come up with. So that's 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 a really good thing. So uh, the. The mid-inspection, at the end of this month, I'm sending three guys down there. They go through the, the uh, chassis of everything that's built. It's called, it's called a mid-inspection. I don't know why they call it. There's no way it's near the middle. Um, and they just make sure that it's built the way we want it. And then it goes for two more weeks or three weeks. They finish putting all the doors, buff it out, finish paint, and then I'm going down the end of May uh, for the final. And then it'll be here in, in June and we'll start training on it, which is really a good time. You know, I didn't want to tell those people that I was not that upset that it's getting here. Um, when you're the snow's you're going to drive it home? Uh, wow, well, no, they don't let me drive. They, they call it brains for bugles. When you get bugles, you can't drive anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure I'm going to play with it a little in a pocket lot. But, uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be here in June, and that's when they'll do some driver training, which is good because, as you all well know, there'll be no snow on the ground. And it's a we different hope. different truck, so it's a... It, yeah, we hope, yeah. So it's a, it's a, going to be a little bit of a training curve, so it's good that, that we'll have it then for them to train on. Um, and then we have a pump due, uh, and that is on schedule. That'll be here, be done July 19th. Uh, that came through a grant as well, so that'll probably be here um, in August. It should be finished in July, so that we'll do the inspections and we'll do, get it here. We'll have some training on that, and that, sh that should be ready to go in August. So that'll, this year, give us two new pumps, a new ladder. Uh, which really helps us a lot in the city. Um, recent fires. We haven't had a, a lot in this neighborhood. The last bad fire we had in the city, really, really bad one, um, actually was Kendall Street. Uh, so I, that's, that's up in this neighborhood a little bit. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough fire. We went to three alarms. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a bad fire. Um, luckily, we stopped it because uh, it, it's, it was on a hard street for access. We weren't going to be able to get any more trucks around it and I was afraid we'd, 
we lose out of the building, so the guys did a really good job uh, stopping it. And I, I also believe the house is salvageable. I don't think it's a teardown. Um, the, the back one or two rooms is burnt pretty bad, but I think it's salvageable. So that, so that was a good stop. Um, we have done mutual aid a few times recently. We've been to Methuen, we've been to Haverhill. Haverhill had a bad fire last Saturday. Uh, and then we came here, we had a, a two alarm fire in Newbury Street, um, but uh, we struck a second alarm out of a, a little bit of caution, which is okay. I, I, it's, we don't want to play catch up in the fire service when a building's on fire. I'd rather send trucks home than be playing behind the eight ball. Uh, it, it looked much worse than it was because of what that asphalt siding that's on the side of a house. It looks like somebody was in the third floor smoking and dropped a cigarette out the window and it got caught between the siding of the house. So it was really an outside fire, but that asphalt siding really smokes and flames a lot. It looked like we, were, we had a bad fire. And they were telling us kids were trapped. And so, oh. you know, the, it, it, it tumbles on itself, gets worse. But it turned out to be a good stop. Uh, we knocked it down very quick. Nobody was trapped. Everybody hurt. And, and the house wasn't really damaged severely. Although they did have some other problems. So we had the board of health in there. And they, get, they were moved out that night because they had a flooded basement and it was in the furnaces. But it, it's a salvageable house. They'll be back. So that, that's good. Um, we also have another grant. I have a Lieutenant Amarno in fire prevention, very smart young uh, guy. He's uh, very well educated and he went out and researched uh, for a grant. He found this company, Global Insurance um, Company, and they, they give grants to fire uh, departments because they do a lot of fire insurance, all commercial, no, no residential. And they also do a lot of testing of commercial stuff. They test on how materials burn, how fast they are. They're, they're into a little bit of research as well as providing insurance. So uh, he got us a $5,000 grant for fire prevention so we can get some um, live upgraded software and uh, laptops uh, for the fire inspectors <coughs> so that they can do their inspections and update things live. Rather than do an inspection and have to go back to the station and then put it in the computers, they'll be able to put it up live with the hot spots in the field, move on to the next one, be able to make uh, file uh, certificates of, of compliance or failure during inspections live. So th that's a really good thing and, and you can get that without a match. That, that was just a free $5,000 for him putting a little bit of work and writing a grant. Um, it was a really good thing. Um, so I was very happy with that. We put that in the paper the other day. And also uh, the Red Cross uh, last Saturday or was it the Saturday the before now? The 8th. Did the smoke detectors, or did any of you here get any of them? The seals? That's awesome. If you missed it, you still can do it. I have a 1-800 number if you want to, if you would, would like it, because they do come back. It's 1-800-746-3511, and they want to come back to Lawrence again because they had over 280 that wanted the smoke detectors, and they only had enough people to do about 170 that one day. So they want to schedule another day, and, and they very much want to be in Lawrence. So that's pretty much all I have. Can you uh, repeat the number, please? Yes, of course. It is 1 800 746 3511. And that's all I have this month. Yes, sir. The house on uh, East Abel Street near the corner. They're fixing that. They are fixing they that. Are, they were very well insured. Uh, we were there the other day because somebody said, oh, there's somebody in the house, so we went over there. And they were pulling some belongings out. They're going to repair that in the process of fixing it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Corner Prospect. And East Haver. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. I know. It was pretty, I thought it was going to be torn down. I guess he was very well insured. It's a beautiful Which, house. Yeah, I, I thought so, too. I thought it was a shame. I hate losing a beautiful place like that. Yeah. Um, Big place. That was a tough fire. But, uh, yeah. the, 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 uh, really nice, too. By me? It was a lousy rainy night. Yeah, it was raining. <laughs> and I had just gotten back from my back surgery, my first time I had back surgery, so that was a long day. And we had a fire fight pretty, pretty, pretty significantly at that fire. He was out for a few weeks with a shoulder injury, and then we just now recently found out when he fell, he fell face first into a wall. And he didn't know it at the time, but he broke his two front teeth up in his, up in his jaw. Oh. So now he's undergoing some surgery, dental surgery for that. But luckily, that's all. He's okay. He hurt his shoulders off for a couple of weeks. <coughs> now he's getting that fixed, but I really thought he was hurt much worse. So we got lucky. Yes? Getting back to the Red Cross, they did a fantastic job. Did they? They came in, they replaced, <coughs> yeah. they put new extra ones in, they, mm -hmm. they, they looked at all the levels of your house. Yeah, awesome. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah, good. They were good. very they excited about, about it. Yeah, that's excellent. I'm glad you're happy with it. Yeah. Deb Duxbury, I'll make sure I tell her. Anything else? All right, thank you very much.
Yeah. Hey, uh, <clears throat> I live on Howard Street here, just down a couple houses from the fire, fire department. Mm -hmm. Many, many cars stop, make U turns to go to that little store. And I wonder if that ever uh, causes any trouble with the fire department getting out. I have not heard that. I've heard they, they complain now. Well, I got one complaint that during school hours, when the school gets out and the buses and the cars, They've had a couple of times they've had a little trouble getting out, but yeah. nobody's complained to me about you trying to go into the store. Yeah. There must be a, must be a hundred U turns there a, yeah. a day. I, I know a couple of cops. I'll, I'll mention that to one of them. <laughs> we'll take care of you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, I guess you're up. Oh, you're next. Wow. Oh. Good evening, everybody. Hey, How are you? Hey, How's everybody tonight? All right? Good. Yes, you're right. Roger's back again. <laughs> I'll start with the numbers for uh, Tower Hill Neighborhood Association, Association for uh, yep, March 2007. You're on the wrong hill. Prospect. I'm sorry. Prospect. <laughs> I have my glasses on. I still can't read it. Prospect Hill. I'm sorry. Uh, homicides, there was zero. Citywide, there was two. Robberies, there was three. Citywide, there was 14. Non-domestic assaults, there was one. Citywide, there was 19. Residential burgs, there was zero. Citywide, there was six. Commercial burgs, there was zero. Citywide, there was eight. Larcenies, over 250, there was seven. Citywide, there was 57. And motor vehicle thefts, there was four. Uh, citywide, there was 44. So, uh, again, we're, we're starting to see that, that number of uh, motor vehicles stolen trending upward again. Um, part of the problem is that people are leaving keys in their car and, and running. So, uh, the trend right now, 26% of the cars stolen in the month of March, in the month, month of February, and well as January, about 26% of those vehicles are stolen with the keys in them. So we're trying to get the word out to people, please don't leave your keys. I know everybody has these new fobs that are in the car with the electric start. Uh, please take the keys with you when you get out. Uh, if you have an older vehicle that you put the keys in it to start the vehicle, don't leave the vehicle warmed up in the mornings. We're seeing a lot of that. You know, guys, people walking to and from school, they see a car that's warm, they jump into it and take off. Hopefully we'll see that number come down now that the warmer weather is uh, upon us, hopefully. But... Um, Again, people that have the four, the, the push start your vehicle. I don't know if anyone's <coughs> familiar with those, but basically you have a little remote control. If you don't have it, it looks like a to open your doors, and then you don't need a key to put. Yeah, he's got one right there. You don't need a key. No key on. Yeah, no key. And all you do is push start your vehicle. But if that if that if that little thing is in your vehicle, and you get out of the car, the car will continue to run. If somebody jumps in it, off they go. So we're asking people to keep the keys in it. We have some, made some significant arrests up in this area for rims and tires. Uh, we took down a couple of major crews over the last month. Uh, we're starting to see that trend downward now. We went from around 20 a month. We're down to around 6, so that's a good sign. Uh, a lot of those guys are being held and not being released. Uh, we also took down another crew that was involved in some commercial being ease in a home invasion at 264 East Haverhill in your neck of the woods. Uh, out of that deal, we ended up arresting uh, six people for the home invasion, but these gentlemen are also doing a lot of the commercial robberies. <coughs> um, as far as gentlemen in the police academy, we have seven in the police academy right now. One just graduated from Renning. He's doing his uh, FTO program right now. He should be on his own within the next six weeks. And the seven that are in the academy right now will not graduate till July 14th, I believe. And uh, then they'll be on their FTO program for another six weeks. And then so we'll hopefully hit the ground running somewhere around August some point. Um, I know there's been some drug complaints in your area. Bear with us. We have a couple of major, major uh, investigations that are going on. And that will uh, kind of wrap up over the next couple of weeks. So you might see a huge impact in some of these uh, hand-to-hands that are going on on the hills and stuff. Uh, we're, we're doing our best to stay on top of it, but we don't want to interfere with the uh, 
federal uh, investigation that's going on. So, but there's something big that'll be coming down the pike. I can't get into it too much, but something major will be coming down over the next couple of weeks. I think that's about all I have. Do you have any questions, any concerns? I know we've had a rough month with some violence that's been going on in the city. Uh, the chief wanted me to mention to you that we are on top of it. Uh, we, we are bringing in a lot of uh, outside agencies that are coming in, DEA, FBI. Uh, the state police has also uh, given us additional help with their CAT team, which is a special operations team. They're going to be in the city three or four times during the week to help us out with the overflow. Uh, we're also, I was in contact with the Alcohol and Beverage Commission. We're going to start doing some more uh, investigations into the nightclubs and doing some more enforcement. So hopefully um, we can get a, get a handle on this before summertime comes. We're hoping to keep our fingers crossed. Um, we're also looking at to try to roll back the hours at the nightclubs again. You know, Roger. But, uh, our thinking on that is a lot, of, a lot, especially on Friday nights, Lowell is open to 2 o'clock in the morning, Friday and Saturday. We're open only to 2 on Friday nights. We've, we're thinking if we roll back the hours, all these people will go too oh. low for last call like the last time, which will have an impact on some of our, hopefully, violent crimes that are in and around those clubs. Any concerns, questions? There was talk on the news the other day about a big meeting. With, uh, could you give us a little bit about... Yeah, so uh, the chief called, people that are not familiar with, the chief called a, uh, a meeting of the command staff, staff in this, in, with the police department. Uh, we also met in that meeting was with the state police. Uh, we discussed some of the techniques that we were deploying now to combat crime uh, and some of the techniques that we're going to do to, uh, new techniques that we're going to try to use to combat it. Again, some of the things like we talked about, we're, we're going to bring in additional resources from the state police. Uh, we've also put together a list of um, violent felons who have gun possession charges, gun warrants. Uh, we contacted the state police fugitive team, which is called BFAST, and they, they, they go after the most violent fugitives. So we're going to try to pick up a lot of these guys on, on, on the gun charges that they have warrants for. And they basically go out all hours at night to try to pick up these pe people and chase down the leads where they are. Um, we're also going to have additional patrols uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights in and around the clubs and also the hot spots. Unfortunately, it seems like there's more hot spots than we have police right now. So uh, with the additional resources, we'll be able to deploy uh, our men in, in, in several of the hot spots mm -hmm. instead of just one or two of the hot spots. So those are some of the techniques. Some of the other ones I don't want to get into too much, kind of play a hand. But uh, we are working on it uh, with, with the aggressive, uh, proactive uh, solutions that I think we came up with in the meeting. I think that uh, we'll see some positive results, I hope. So, again, a, a lot of these crimes, you know, again, it doesn't, probably doesn't make anybody feel any safer, obviously. But, I mean, a lot of these are targeted crimes. A couple of them were domestic nature, and you know those are very unfortunate, but they're very tough to stop. But uh, you know a lot, a lot of the other ones are to do with either drug trade, gang on gang. So you know again, it doesn't make anybody safer. It doesn't make the streets any safer. But a lot of these are targeted. They're not just picking innocent people off the streets. So we're on it. Um, you know again, we're going to work as hard as we can. The chief's committed to the city, the mayor's committed to the city, so we're going to do our best to try to get this under control quickly. So, um, instead of sitting on it. At night on High Street, between Summit, uh, Canton, and Bowen Street, mm -hmm. I've been finding a lot of needles on the floor. That means they're doing mm -hmm. a lot of trafficking during the night. And at the same time, those people park on those little streets yeah. every night, and they don't leave out there. I'll, I'll pass that on. So we are having a lot of problems with the needles. They've, they've, they've started that clean needle exchange program again. Um, I don't know if it's, it's making the problem better or worse, but we are seeing an, in, an uptick in a lot of the needles being disposed improperly. Um, I can tell you that a lot of the pox, we've, we'll, we'll really see it probably on 
Saturday when we have birthday when we do the cleanup. But I know a lot of these parks that guys are going into, they're collecting hundreds of needles to the point where, I mean, we've given them, we had a cleanup at West Street. We ran out of, you know, shoppy containers. So, it, you know, it's the, the opioid, app, you know, is it, an epidemic. It's, it's everywhere. It's something we're trying to combat. But the needle problem is really out of control. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings, myself, the chief, uh, and our chief with uh, Greater Lawrence Health Center. Um, they're doing a great job. They're giving us the, the containers. Anybody that finds a needle, even if it's on your street, you can contact them and they'll send somebody out to get it. Right, Chief? Mm -hmm. That's what she said. But if not, you can contact the Lawrence Police Department on the non-emergency number and we'll send officers up there to, to dispose of the problem. Yeah. I send a picture to the chief. And yeah. And he said he would do something. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the drug. We'll get the drug unit up there. But I think one of the biggest problems that we have today is that a lot of diabetic people they dispose it, uh, they no, throw it away I those needles. Diabetics are educated and they have a prescription. Yeah, but uh, and and today I had a diabetic bring it come into the station with bleach bottles. It's the druggies that are doing it, not the diabetics. Yeah, but how can people buy? Those uh, syringes. Anybody can buy syringes. You don't even need a script Anybody? anymore. Anybody? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not. They're they're not that's that's they're part of the problem. They, they they they're not regulated, and right. with this new clean, you know, uh, needle exchange program, they're giving people needles, yeah. and with the, with saying to them, you're responsible. So if I give you six needles, you're supposed to bring back six needles to Greater Lawrence Family Health Center okay. before they give you another six. You that's how the program's supposed mm -hmm. to. So people are educated. And the disposing of the of these properly, and and that's what they're trying to get. That's what the whole clean needle exchange program is about. You know, obviously, so that they don't spread disease, but also to educate people on how to dispose of these properly. And I don't think that's being done like the chief. What we're seeing is people are coming from out of state. They're shooting up, and then they're just throwing their needles mm -hmm. wherever you know wherever they you know shot out the land. So that that's a serious problem. You know, and again, we're, we're really feeling the effects of it over the last year, year and a half, where we've seen this spike, you know, in, in, in overdoses as well as, you know, all these needles, these dirty needles being in there. So, again, it's something that we need to do. At one point, there wasn't, they weren't allowed to do that needle exchange, but they brought that back. And, and again, I don't know if it helped or it hurt. But, again, the, the effects are, are terrible on the community right now. And we're seeing it. But all the all the cruises, just like the fire department, we all have shoppy containers in it. So if you find a needle, don't touch it. Give us a call. We'll be happy to come up and get it. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, I know it's not as near as bad a problem as the opioid problem, but uh, what about the noise ordinance? Are we? We're yeah. back in full swing. Yeah, um, we yeah, don't. We don't think that's one day. So, yeah. <coughs> so now that the now that the nice weather's back. We'll, we'll start, you know, hearing that. But, yeah, we'll, we're going to add that noise car again uh, on the weekends, probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and are people actually being fined for... Yeah, we've had, we've, we, we, we kind of preach, the chief kind of preaches that, um, you know, we, we give the dis some discretion to the police officers, but we, we like people fined. If you're going to a location more than once, you're fining them. If it's a problem house, you're fining them on every time you go there. If you go there and it's questionable and the people are respectful and you you know you look at the we you know we know the log if we've been there because it's logged in mm -hmm. so you know they'll tell you yeah we've never been there for a loud music before mm -hmm. we'll give people a break again we're not trying to hurt people right. Right. Um, right. but if it's we a we don't want to say anything to them. we don't want them to know who's complaining no and we we don't we don't get if you call yeah. it to the station we don't give that information I know that. yeah I know but I um, I don't want to go up to a neighbor and say will you please tone it down a little you know. Well, again, I, like I mean, it. yeah, I, I, in this day and age, I probably say, yeah, don't do that because yeah. everybody's confrontational. But in the old days, I mean, you know, neighbors being neighbors, right. you used to be able right. to go up and talk to people right. and kind of, you know. So if you can settle it, great. But again, we don't want anybody to put themselves in right. harm's way because nowadays people are a little more brazen and not, yeah, not as not as nice yeah. as a neighbor, sure. you know, right. as you can see. But um, yeah, so just give us a call. You can call the non-emergency line again, give the information, we'll get a car out uh, as soon as possible. But yeah, I mean, any, any type of loud music that you hear, please call us, we'll, we'll take care of it. And, and then we are issuing $200 fines. Does that include the vehicles that are being driven in our city with the music? Yes. And 
how do we well again it's, we a, it's a little different to you it's when it's actually it's, on the driving behind. it's a little more difficult when when the vehicle is on the move obviously uh, if you can get a plate you can give us a call but I mean it's a, it makes it a little more difficult when, the, when, when they're on the move I know your specific problem. We'll, we'll, I'll talk to you a little more. Well, about that's it. Um, part of the picture. Because the season is changing, like everybody knows, this is when the music is in the vehicle with the windows down. Right. And they're on the move. Yeah. And they drive into the... the, the well, again, we, we, we kind of put it on our website and try to educate people. But I mean, if you guys are like stopped at red lights and you're you hearing, do you pull them over? Yes, we do. Do you promise? <laughs> I can I mean, promise you. In, we're, in, we're very serious with the noise ordinance. They're pulling in to pick up their friend in that, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds that they're idling in the driveway. So a lot of these young kids, they play the music very loud. Mm -hmm. They have that bass going. It's yeah. the bass. It's a, it's a chronic problem. Yeah. You know? Come the the windows and enjoy the music. That's what I tell them to do. Yeah, but, you know, fish. You still hear it. it. Doesn't matter. Some of these cars, even with the windows closed, you can hear it vibrate your whole house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, we, last year I think we we're around uh, on the issuance of tickets. I think you know, say we had uh, a thousand noise calls. I want to say we we're around 850 on issuance of tickets. So it's 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 a very high percentage of, of tickets being. Um, but some people don't care. They pay the ticket. They don't pay the ticket. So what am I supposed to think when I see a cruiser in a loud music car? Am I supposed to think something like the office is busy or is he not paying well, attention? Well, I would hope, again, I would hope that the officer addresses that. I know I always do. Because uh, I don't want to stop to feel like I want to police my police. Well, like I said, I, I, can, I can assure you that if, uh, you know, I found out one of my guys, one of my officers was next to a crew, that, a, a car that had loud music, and they didn't do anything about it, they'd surely hear it. <coughs> and I know the chief feels the same way. So, uh, the city's going to pot because of these situations that we can't get our hands around. Absolutely. I mean, quality of life issues are, exactly. are, are the number one thing that we try to address. So, we're trying. I mean... Um, how much truth is there to the claim that Lawrence is a sanctuary city? I can't speak to that. <laughs> Can't speak to that. No, you have to talk to. I mean, we. I can just tell you from the, the Lawrence Police Department standpoint, we haven't changed anything that we, that we do the way we operate. So, I've been a police officer going on 20 years now. So we're, we're still policing the same way we always police. So we're not immigration police. Never no. have been. Never will be unless the president changes that. But we don't. You know, we have no authority to deport anybody, uh, hold anybody on any immigration status. The only people that can do that is ICE, and that's it. So, I mean, again, if they're a federal agency and they come into the city, um, you know, we cooperate with them. We, you know, we call the chief and we cooperate with them. But, I mean, we, as a large police department stands, we're not immigration. So, we really don't have anything to do with that. And I don't know what, I don't know what the city's perspective is on sanctuary. I have no idea. You have to talk to somebody from the mayor's office, okay. I believe. Thank you. No problem. Just getting back to the noise audience, can you just give us kind of go give us a rough idea of what it is that yeah, we so should be calling you for? And what's, what's so the there's reasons? no there's just to give you on, on the ordinance the way the ordinance is written there's no hours of operation so it's it's not from you know like any specific hours like from 8 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's any noise any time of the day that goes over the boundaries of a person's property. So it could be as minor as you playing a radio at a normal level. If it's disturbing to him and he can hear it from his porch, it's a violation. So there's a lot of discretion that needs to be taken into play. Thank you. But at you know at one o'clock in the morning when the bass is going and somebody's having a potty, I mean that's a clear violation. <coughs> you know. So sometimes like be a Saturday afternoon and neighbors having a party and I'm. You know. Yeah, and again, it, it can be it can be loud at that point. But again, that's when, you know, again, I know when I have a potty at my house, if I'm going to have people over, I go to the, the three neighbors that are closest to me and I say, 
hey, it's 4th of July, I'm having a party, you're more than welcome to come over, but it might be a little loud for a little while. It's not going to be loud at 11 o'clock, but it might be loud to like 8, 8.30. Hey, yeah, right, no problem. Yeah. I mean, that goes a long way. Oh, yeah. You know, if somebody came and knocked on your door and said that, you'd have, probably have no problem. You know, at, 10, you know, at 8, 8.30, they shut the music off and everybody goes home. Hey, no yeah. problem. But that's not the way that people are not good neighbors anymore. If everybody was a good neighbor, we'd have no problems. Yeah. A lot of these things wouldn't even be brought up at, at the meetings like this. Right. Which is, wouldn't be good because I'd probably be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, but, two in the morning. Yeah, things like that. But again, stuff like that, try to, you know, again, 2 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Saturday night, we're probably going to be hot pressed saying? to get there right away. Yeah. But call. As soon as we get a car free, we'll get up there. But there might, you, might, you might have a lull that we can get a car right up there. But, you know, again, we, if, if you don't call us, we don't know about it, we can't take care of the issue. <coughs> Any other questions, concerns? That's it, I'm off the hook. Yeah. How come you have all these questions for me, but nothing for this fire chief? <laughs> he puts out all the fires. <laughs> really? Yeah, they don't, none of them get away. <laughs> all right, I'll be at to the end of the meeting. Abel? Yeah, um, something. So I, I, I'm here. My name is Abel Vargas. I'm the, the business and economic development director for the city. Um, last meeting, from what I understand, there were some questions and some thoughts about Tom Barrell. So really, I just want to, I guess, spend a few minutes talking about what's been done and where we're at, um, and then take any questions that the folks may have about uh, the future plans for, for that site. So as many of you, as you, of you know, we, uh, we took the property um, back in May of last year. <laughs> The property had about $1.7 million in back taxes, and we hadn't received anything on that thing since 2001, I believe. Uh, so we went through the process of doing that, so we have ownership of it. Um, the site is contaminated. Uh, we did a phase two brownfield assessment, it's called, and it was determined that the cleanup clean cost would be somewhere between three and four million. We are in the process of identifying funding sources to be able to cover the, the cleanup cost. Um, one of the things that Mass DEP required us to do because the site is contaminated and if you have access to it you're liable to get you know some health issues so what we did was we're actually in the process now if you go out there tomorrow morning you'll see some gentlemen putting up a fence on the southern border close to um, Chevrolet, the Chevrolet dealership um, and that should be done within the next two weeks or so. Um, in May of this year we should know whether or not we're getting funding to do the cleanup and the way we split up the cleanup is because we only get one two hundred thousand dollars, right? Um, so we're focusing on the front portion of the of the lot, the one that abuts, um, that fronts on Marshall Street. So we took two acres of the fourteen acres, and we're looking to clean that up prior to cleaning up the rest of it. <coughs> the rest of it, you know, at some time in the future, we'll figure out how to do that. But we're bullish, we're hopeful, and we think we'll be able to secure funding for that front portion. And as time progresses, hopefully, we'll be able to do more of it. In terms of future development, the answer is we don't know. Uh, we know that whatever goes in there um, has to minimally affect the neighborhood. We don't want to create a situation where people' quality of life is coming down because of increased traffic or you know this and another. So we want to make sure that whatever we put in there or we promote is consistent with what the neighborhood wants. So we'll be here at these meetings as time progresses to talk about the site to make sure that everyone in this room. Other folks in the community know um, what we're planning and what we're hoping to happen on that site. That's all I got. <laughs> folks have any questions? No casinos. No casinos. <laughs> no, 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 no. How about um, Ferry and Marston Street? So, so that, so that's a, a separate, a related but separate project. We, you know, that that intersection for a long time, um, there has been talks of a signal going in there and. You know, for 10 years, the signals haven't gone in. Um, but from what I understand, based on DOT, in the last two years, there were 54 accidents. So that's, what's that, 24 months? So, you know, you're talking about more than two accidents per month, and those are just the reported accidents. So we petitioned the state for some funding, so they awarded us $1.3 million, and we're going through the design process now. And we'll, go, we'll be going out to bid in September or October of this year with the hopes of having construction start next construction season, so March, April. That will happen. So we'll get a full light signal at that intersection. One, one, uh, at the public meeting you had, one of the complaints was parking on Marston Street. 
and this, the state rep, I don't remember what his name was, was there. He was going to put up parking signs, and I noticed he did do that. Right. right. There are parking, no parking signs up and down Marston Street in that area. Right, and, and that, that came out because I, from what I understand, um, Charlie Dare and his, crew and his crew, they put those car carriers out on the street, so it narrows the street. <coughs> so if you're driving down and you're trying to get around this, you end up, end up um, going on the opposite um, the opposite traffic um, lane, so it kind of disrupts the traffic and, and the way people go from one point to another on that street. So that was important for us to do, and hopefully they play nice. No, another, you maybe you make make a note. I think the next intersection down Ferry and Marston, there's a light with a yellow flashing on Marston Street, and it used to be the red flashing light was up Ferry. So right. when you come down Ferry, you stop, or during one of the windstorms. It turned. It turned. <laughs> right? And, and I don't think it was ever fixed. This she, is that. she says, what do we do? We stop, go? <laughs> well, uh, the, 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 chief, the chief and his team manage the uh, chief, um, oh. the light, light signals. Yeah. Um, they manage that. So if okay, you, is, that, is that state or is that city? No, I think that's city. City. At the, at the corner of Ferry and Marston. That's yeah, the city on one. That's the city on light? There's only two owned by the state. One's out on 114 by the highway and one is right on uh, uh, Marston Street. I think during one of the windstorms, it turned the light. So when you're coming down Marston Street, you look up and you see a red flashing light and a yellow flashing light. Uh, I'll have them check at the moment. Yeah. But I, that's one that's going to go into a major renovation. No, that, that's, no, that's Ferry. Marston, Ferry. Ferry. It's Ferry, Ferry and Marston. Okay. Over, by, over by where Tomorello's is. Uh, not Ferry. Uh, East Haverhill. East Haverhill. East Haverhill. Oh. So East East Haverhill. Haverhill. East Haverhill. East Haverhill. <laughs> yeah, I think it turned there. Yeah. All right. That's not what I thought you said. Okay. Oh, that's not what I said. It's not both of those. I don't know where I am. <laughs> well, so so that, the, the one on um, East Haverhill hasn't been identified yet, but my, what I anticipate is when there's actual development, on the Tom Barilla site, traffic improvements will have to be made to make to 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 account for the increased traffic potentially that will be on Ferry, sorry, on um, on Marston and East Haverhill. Anything else? You don't have anything? Oh, the kids. The kids are great. Two and four. <laughs> we're having we're having a birthday party on Friday. The Lion Guard is the theme. It's going to be great. Two, two, two weeks of planning a birthday party. Roger, we know you don't have anything to say. Right. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <How'd> you <guess? laughs> uh, just a point of interest. At our uh, pancake breakfast last November, okay? We met all the expenses that we had to and we have some cash left over. So what we've done is uh, we put a call out to the veterans groups to see if anyone, specifically in Lawrence, and they basically a Lawrence veteran, could use some, some, some kind of financial help. Well, we finally associated with a group in Haverhill, and they did pick a young gentleman uh, who went out and bought a home from Habitat from Humanity, and he's in need of some money for uh, closing costs on the house. So we're going down there tomorrow, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, and uh, we're going to give him a check for $500, which is going to help towards his closing costs. So it's, uh, it makes you feel good when you finally see someone who needs help and is willing to, uh, and, and takes it, you know what I mean? So we're going to, uh, matter of fact, you can come along, Jim, if you'd like. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. Huh? I'm going to get some press. Okay. Yeah, we'd like to get some press for it because if we do, then maybe someone within the city or Phil, who has a little bankroll might be willing to step forward and, and help. But if we don't do it, if it doesn't happen, then they'll never know. So, Rumble's coming. Rumble's coming. coming. I'm going to treat you in the coming. So if you know, if anybody has a lot of money and you want to separate themselves from a lot, a little bit of it, just let us know. We'll find a place to put it. <laughs> when did you say you... Tommy? When did you say you're going tomorrow? Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, 124, 126 Phillip Street. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Married with two children. Married with two children. This is in Lawrence. Oh, it's in Lawrence. Okay. He's a Lawrence veteran. He's a, he's a Lawrence man and he's a veteran from Lawrence. 
Okay. So we feel pretty good about that. Ray actually has a group going there on Saturday to do a work day. Uh, where? Phillips Street, the Veterans House. Oh, really? Not done yet? No. The house isn't finished? I don't think so. Is it Ray? No. no. What side is supposed to be done? I got this yet. Is one side, is somebody living in it, Ray? No, no. No, not the one. One side is near, near finished and the other is getting close to us. Oh, good. That's why I was Is talking. it nice? We'll see it tomorrow night, so. They're excited. They're very excited. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Habitat for Humanity is a real nice job yeah. when, they, when they build these houses. Yeah. You know. Same thing with Youth Build. Youth Build does the same thing. Mm -hmm. But at the breakfast, we can have raffles now so we can get yeah. them. There's a group called um, Bread and Roses that does that built two homes on near the Patham School. Uh -huh. Just, just and people living in there now. And they went up fast. They went up a lot faster than the Habitat Houses. <laughs> The Habitat House is a lot of volunteer work. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Inside us. Youth Build is, is a nice project, too. Mm -hmm. You know. We, um, From something right next to them. Another very good rise work. Now that I'm not in political office, I'm not a politician anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we can have raffles. So last, uh, last November we had one raffle. And we, oh, and we hope to get some more when we have the pancake breakfast again this year in November. Mm -hmm. So, any, any questions about it? No? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay. We'll, 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 I'll, either I'll be there or something. Tomorrow night, that would be busy, right? I'll have it out tomorrow. Good. Yeah. Great. Anybody else? Are we here? Uh, this Saturday is our day. Uh, we're going to be cleaning around um, the Lutheran Church because we hold the, uh, these three neighborhood meetings at that place. Then we cleaned there last year and we found like 20 needles because we went around Howard and Star District. Uh, this year we're not planning to go that far, but um, one of the houses that was uh, burned on Howard. Uh, Pastor Eric insisted a lot in, in, and reported to the city hall, and now that house is on um, construction at this moment, which is good. Uh, but uh, people are complaining about the lights around there. And the lights are too dim, or they, they don't turn on on time. Then um, I, I was teaching people how to do it. You had to call National Green. People think that the city hall does everything. But um, uh, that we have to look at the four numbers on the light bulb <laughs> and call National Grid. I did call National Grid for a uh, summit. <laughs> Five different light bulbs, and the light is so poor over there that now I understand why people are hiding to do drug things around there. But this Saturday we're going to be at the Redeemer Lutheran Church, and we're going to be cleaning around there as much as we can. From nine to all the way to twelve, and we are partnered with Grand World Lawrence, but they bring the supplies to us. Thank you. On Saturday, Retirement said that she couldn't make it tonight. And uh, you know that her mom passed away, and it has been kind of difficult for her son, the one with autism, to deal with the loss of, her, of his grandma. Then she has to be home a lot of time. So, if you go onto the city site, in addition to the uh, sanitation being delayed by a day this week because of the holiday, there's also now a listing of the cleaning of the streets. The street sweeper is going to come back. And our area isn't scheduled until the end of May, beginning of June. But they give you a map and they tell you which areas they're going to be doing and that they will do the off-side parking. And there's, they've started in South Lawrence West this week. So it's How important. often are they going to be doing that? It's like two to three week periods in each section. And it's an outside company that's going to be doing it. And they're just coming around once, or you don't know. They're coming around it said every they're day going to start to, yeah. 
At midnight. At midnight till six. The people don't park in the park away. They're going to get it closed. Yeah. They're so it's important to go to the site every once in a while and find out what the city's doing. But it's on the City of Lawrence site. And they've started yard waste pickup too. We read that today. Maybe last week in April. Next week. Yeah, the 24th. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They come every two weeks, I think. Oh, they take. And then in August, they come every week. Right. The schedule for that is on there as well. The schedule for that is on there as well. <laughs> okay, I, the only other thing is, I don't know how many people know about the Leo Merger monument in uh, Starro Park, dedicated to Park as a place stamped on him. He was a World War II, a World War I soldier, and he was a firefighter who died because of uh, the sickness he got pumping out the uh, Rollins, not the Rollins School, the Leonard School Leonard. during the hurricane of 1938. Right? And he passed away, so they, they dedicated a monument to him. Uh, last, a couple weeks ago, they tagged it, right? Somebody went through the neighborhood and, uh, with blue paint and tagged a lot of things, and one of the things was the monument. <coughs> Leo's birthday is the 29th. He'd be 117 years old on the 29th of this month. And we were going to go down and clean the graffiti off. So I'd beat, beat us to it. Right? I don't know who did it, but somebody somebody I'm cleaned it. Huh? Did you do that? No, I wouldn't know. Maybe it was that guy that helped you plant the flowers in the spring. Right. Well, I don't know where he was. He didn't do a very good job. We need but to go he back. Job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. But he did do it. Hmm? I'm fine. I'm back. Wow. Okay. Good job. Did you did you do it? No. No, I don't know I don't know who did it. No. But there was a, there also a little further down High Street there's a there's a wall, beige co colored wall. They tagged that too and whoever lived there evidently took it off. They did a, they did a good job of taking it off. They also the, did the sign. They did the sign, they did the, the wooden fence on uh, what street do we live? Pleasant Street. Where do you live? But whoever, I don't know who, I don't know, I have absolutely no idea who cleaned that monument. I'd like to know because I'd like to find Well, I thought they said the city was starting a graffiti cleanup. What are they using? Well, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. All right, the, graf the graffiti cleanup truck went away a long time ago. The only thing they used to use it for was to flower, water flowers and stuff. Um, <laughs> the, the sheriff's department also had a graffiti cleanup truck um, that they used to come and do, do graffiti with. But, um, but we need to go back and do a little touch up on who were, who were cleaning it. But they, they did, they, you know, you have to know that it had been tagged and right. see, the, see what's left over. There's a shadow left on the, on the monument. We'll, we'll get back down there. <coughs> Maybe on his birthday. Plant flowers. <laughs> oh yeah, we can plant flowers again. In May, you planted the flowers. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a shame they had to tag one of our heroes. But, uh, mm -hmm. And walls and signs. Walls and they signs. They went right through. Right yeah, that, through. I, I, don't, I don't even know whether it was, it was somebody local or not. All right. Uh, because they went through and they tagged that pickup fence, they tagged the, the sign, they tagged the Monument. They tagged the um, um, wall, mm -hmm. and then down on 495, underneath the bridge, they tagged there too. So it looked like somebody was going through the neighborhood and you know doing the tag. Boom, boom, boom. Doesn't take them long either. No, it doesn't take them long, and, and they were on yeah. their way. And they were out of there. Yeah, they're out of there. <coughs> the last time, they actually took them to court. I think they got. I don't know. If they got jail time or they got fined. But um, my buddy Don Cronin, went back to community policing, they had tagged the back of a studio, right? And we took pictures of it, right, like we always did with the, with the tags, so we could figure out where they were and what they were doing. They also tagged Havel. Between Cronin and the Havel police, they captured them. 
and it was two 21-year-olds from Boston or someplace that had just come through the neighborhood, boom, 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 boom. Yes. And uh, they took them to court, so I don't remember what we had, what happened to them. But that's the last two, two taggers I know that we got. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, tagging is a tough, tough thing. Yeah, to do. if the police, if the police department, a policeman sees them doing it, he can arrest them right on the spot. Yeah, there's some serious charges for, for yeah. the tagging. It's a whole separate thing. Yeah. Um, if, if you have a specific location, we've been having some success with um, the pole cams mm -hmm. that that go live. Yeah. That's how we caught the. There was a guy that was uh, kept tagging the bandstand oh. in South Lawrence, mm -hmm. so we put a pole cam up, which is live to the phone. And um, we went to, you know, police department's phone, and we dispatched somebody who ended up getting it. But you know, it, 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 tagging is we we get them here and there, but I mean, it's still yeah, going it is, on. it's not it's it's not like what it used to be. It's not no, gang. but we we still see it in in, in some locations, yeah. and, and it looks bad, you know. So um, I know the I know they're in the process of um, trying to uh, get a lot of that cleaned up. I think they got the graffiti truck should be pretty much up and running soon. So if you have some locations that need to be cleaned, let us know. I'll go over to the DPW and try to get it over there, kind of get it cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Also, we can talk to some of the property owners uh, and see if they can clean it up. They were talking on a, you know, they're kind of responsible if it's on their property to clean it. So inspectional services can get that out there and try to make them repaint it and clean it up. So if you have some specific areas that need or look terrible. Give us a, you know, give us the information. And we'll try to take care of it. We, when we, when we were, we used to do it, graffiti every morning. Believe it or not, in Prospect Hill, we go out in the morning and do the graffiti, wipe it out the, the ones that they night, did the night before. We also had had a memo that they signed that, in case we you know, messed up their siding or whatever, that they yeah. weren't responsible for. It. But, um, you have to be careful with the graffiti remover on vinyl siding because yeah, after you get all the all the graffiti off it, it takes the sheen off of the vinyl siding so it doesn't look too good for a while. Anything else? Nobody has anything else? I guess we go home. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Roger's already had his day of fame. <laughs> this is where we found out about that. Well, this is where surprise. you found out about that it. That was supposed to be a surprise. Really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, everybody's cordially invited to a plaque dedication ceremony in honor of our friend Roger Toomey. It's going to be this Saturday, no, next Saturday, no, April the 29th, 2017, at 11 a.m. An honor for his service in the Air Force, 1950 to 54. Really about, about the same time, a little earlier. And his service as licensing, licensing commissioner and city councilor at large. The city will be hosting a small unveiling ceremony at the corner of Jefferson and Leeds Terrace, rain or shine. Right? So that's Saturday, April the 29th, 2017. It's also supposed to be, uh, we don't, I don't have the date, they're going to name uh, a street after uh, Dave Burke. Dave Burke. Oh, yeah. 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 Down in some area East down there. East Kingston. East, is it, you said, yeah. I know you said East Kingston. Yeah, it's Dave Burke Way, they're going to call it. Yeah, yeah, Dave Burke Way. But I don't know whether it's going to be on the same day or a different date. So. I will find out. We will find out and we'll let everybody know. Well, obviously, we, we lost our president for the night he's working. So. <laughs> he's not sick. He doesn't have measles or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and our, and our, and our, and our exactly. person who normally closes us out is not here. <laughs> they had another commitment. So I guess the meeting is over. We're all adjourned. <laughs> no more.